Hello. For tonight's grisly tale, I'm going to read you a story from Ghostly Tales for Ghastly Kids. These are cautionary tales that I wrote for lovers of Squeam. Tonight's story is called An Elephant Never Forgets. If you know what happened to Belinda and Percy Crumpdum, then don't say a word, because you'll only spoil the ending for the others. If you've never heard of them, then I must warn you now that the story you're about to hear is full of greed, misfortune, sadness, cruelty, and just deserts. Those of a nervous disposition should close the book right now. So, you've decided to stay, have you? Very brave. Belinda and Percy Crumpdump belong to Mr. and Mrs. Crumpdump of Crumpdump Road, Crumpdump Town in Crumpdump County. Mr. Crumpdump was a very, very wealthy man and owned an entire town all by himself. Mrs. Crumpdump was no pauper either. She had made a fortune by waiting for her father to die, which he had done with little grace and much impatience. They were not the most pleasant family in the world, and just as the old saying says, money was not able to buy them happiness. It did buy them a safari holiday in Africa, though. They drove through the African bush in their open-top Rolls Royce, looking at the wildlife. Their guide was a friendly old man called Roger, who had lived in Africa all his life and knew everything there was to know about wild animals. He knew where they slept, where they played, where they ate their lunch, and most importantly, where they went to get away from the prying eyes of families like the Crump Dumps. This is why Mr Crump Dump had hired Roger, because he wanted his family to see the animals that nobody else had ever seen before. Animals truly in the wild. Roger certainly knew his stuff. He spent day after hot day running in front of the Rolls Royce, looking for signs that would tell him whether there were any animals about. He found plenty. The Crump Dump saw a sleepy tiger stretched out on a high branch, next to an impala that he had just killed and dragged up the tree for his breakfast. They saw a flange of baboons grooming each other by the edge of a lake, a herd of giraffes moving gracefully across an open plain, thousands of wildebeest, a family of lions, and a funny-looking pig called a warthog. <coughs> Yet Belinda and Percy never once showed even the tiniest flicker of interest. I want to see an elephant, moaned Belinda. If we'd wanted to see lions, added a very grumpy Percy, we could have popped along to London Zoo. Mr Crumpdump stopped the car. Mrs Crumpdump was crying. What is it, dear? he said, offering her a towel to wipe her eyes with. Our little babies are not happy, blubbed the stupid woman in the bush hat. Mr Crumpdump stood up in the car and shouted for Roger. Yes, sir, said Roger, when he arrived seconds later, panting. Call yourself a guide, sneered Mr Crumpdump. My children want to see an elephant and you haven't managed to produce one yet. Well, I'm doing my best, sir, said Roger. But elephants do not grow on trees. More the pity, sniped Percy. We might see one if they did. Luckily for Roger, it was not long before they did see some elephants. In fact, they very nearly ran them over. A large family crossed the road in front of the Rolls Royce as it turned the next corner. The bull elephant led the way, followed by six young ones. They had their trunks wrapped around each other's tails so as not to get lost. Bringing up the rear was the mother. She was very nervous and trumpeted loudly when she saw the car for fear that the crump dumps might attack her brood. Oh, are they gorgeous, said Belinda. I want one, said Percy. Mrs Crump Dump was quick to reply. I am not having an elephant in my house, she said. Meanie. 
said Percy. You never let us have what we want. Why not? Because I don't want them pooping on my new carpet, said Mrs Crump Crump. Belinda tossed the curls off her forehead and laughed at her mother. Oh, mummy, she said. You are a silly mummy. It wouldn't have to be alive. No, we could shoot it, added Percy. A dead elephant, said the horrified mother. It would smell the house down. No, and that's my final word. Belinda went all gooey and stroked her father's hair. She knew every trick in the book when it came to getting what she wanted. Oh, please, Daddy, she said in her most sugary voice. Pretty please, with pink bows on. We'll see, said Mr Crump Dump, beaming munificently. But, but you are not allowed to kill elephants, said Roger, who had been listening to every word. It is against the law. We will see said Mr Crump Dump angrily. He didn't like to be contradicted, especially by a paid guide. He slammed the Rolls Royce into gear and drove off in a swirling cloud of dust, squashing Roger's foot as he went. <coughs> Belinda and Percy sulked all the way home. They made it quite clear from their long-faced silence that they wanted a baby elephant. It's only one said Percy on the aeroplane back to England. It's not as if we're asking for the whole herd. Mr Crump Dump smiled a private smile behind his copy of Money Makers Monthly and took another sip of brandy. The children went back to school a week later. Mr Crump Dump went back to work and Mrs Crump Dump went back to her favourite clothes shop and spent £5,000 on a dress that she wasn't sure she'd ever wear. One morning, while the Portuguese maid was spreading caviar on Belinda's toast, the doorbell rang. I'll get it, shouted Percy, leaping up from the table before anyone could stop him. It was the postman carrying a huge parcel wrapped up in brown paper and string. Master Percy Crump Dump, said the postman. Yes, said Percy. Got a parcel here for you and your sister. Hot foot from Africa, you might say. He chuckled at his own joke, but Percy didn't understand it. Uh, who is it? shouted Mr Crump Dump from the bathroom upstairs. It's the postman with a hot foot from Africa, Percy shouted back. Mr Crump Dump bounded down the stairs in his dressing gown, his face still covered with shaving foam, and said, Oh, good, I, I thought it would never arrive. Then he gave the startled postman a fifty-pound note, shut the front door, and carefully carried the parcel into the sitting room. By now, Belinda had joined them, all thoughts of beluga toast banished from her mind. What is it? she said excitedly, jumping up and down on her mother's new carpet. Why don't you open it and see? said Mr Crump Dump. His grin now stretched from ear to ear, and there was a very real possibility that if it grew much wider, his face might split in two. The children tore at the brown paper and string until their fingers bled. Thirty seconds later, they had uncovered their father's secret. It was grey, it was about four feet tall, and it had five white toenails. Oh, said Percy. What is it? said Belinda. It's disgusting, said Mrs Crump Dump, who had just walked in. It's an elephant's foot, said Mr Crump Dump proudly. Yes, yes, but what is it? said Belinda again. Well, it, it's an elephant's foot umbrella stand. The children smiled weakly at their father. He had definitely gone a bit soft in the head. What did they want with an umbrella stand? Mr Crump Dump continued. You remember those baby elephants we saw in Africa? You know, the ones you wanted to bring home with you? They nodded. Well, obviously I couldn't bring a whole elephant back to England, so I, I had a hunter cut off one of the baby's feet. Isn't it lovely? Percy looked a trifle confused. Do you mean to say that one of those baby elephants that we saw is walking around with only three legs? 
he asked. Well, of course not, said his father. Percy and Belinda looked relieved. Of course he's not walking around. He's dead. I had him shot before I chopped his leg off. Oh, that was kind of you, said Belinda. There was an uneasy silence because nobody knew what to say next. It was Mr. Crumpdump who spoke first. Good, well, I'm glad you like it. I'll put it in the hall next to the leopard skin rug. After the initial shock of seeing a dead elephant's foot in their sitting room, the children grew to like their new present. They were the envy of their school friends, who all wanted one too. This helped to make the elephant's foot seem even more special in the eyes of Belinda and Percy. Besides, they had got what they wanted, and that was the main thing. It also proved to be most handy for storing umbrellas especially as a spate of bad weather had just settled in over England. It had been raining non-stop for three weeks when Mrs Crumpdump announced that she was taking the children to the shops to buy them some new shoes. Oh, do we have to? moaned goggle-eyed Percy, who was slouched on the sofa watching his fifth video in a row. Yes, we do, said his mother sharply, but we'll get soaked whined Belinda. A little bit of water never did anyone any harm, said Mrs Crumpdump, holding out their red Macintoshes and sou'westers. The children dragged their grumpy feet into the hall. Oh, I wish it would stop raining, said Belinda as she took an umbrella from the elephant's foot. <laughs> Fat chance of that, muttered Percy. And the rain stopped. In less time than it takes to turn off a tap, the black thunder clouds disappeared, giving way to a clear blue African sky. Belinda looked at Percy. Percy looked at Belinda. Then they both looked at their mother. But Mrs Crumpdump was looking in her handbag for the car keys. Did you see that? shouted Belinda. I, I wished that the rain would stop, and it did. I can do magic. Well, no, you can't, said Percy. That was a fluke. No, it wasn't. I'll do it again, if you don't believe me. She looked very seriously at the sky, rolled back her eyes and chanted in a sort of deep magician's voice. I wish it would start raining again. But nothing happened. If anything, the sun shone even brighter. Told you, teased Percy. But I... I did make it stop raining, I did! Belinda threw a tantrum and hurled the umbrella back into the elephant's foot. And it started raining again. This time, Belinda and Percy did not look at each other. Their eyes were firmly fixed on the elephant's foot. The same thought flashed through their heads at exactly the same time. Percy grabbed the umbrella first and shouted, I wish I was twenty foot tall! His mother screamed as suddenly he shot upwards and disappeared through the hall ceiling. His head crashed through the floorboards of the bathroom like a battering ram. Percy rubbed the egg on his huge forehead and said, Actually, I wish I wasn't, and he shrank back to his normal size. Belinda was frantically waiting for the umbrella, but once she had got it in her hand, she couldn't think of anything to wish for. Well, I wish... I wish, I, I, I wish, oh, I wish I had a poster of Jason Donovan, she screamed at last. And there it was, neatly rolled up inside the elephant's foot umbrella stand. Mrs Crumpdump lay unconscious on the floor as Belinda and Percy hugged the magic elephant's foot. It was quite the most brilliant toy they had ever had and they danced with glee around its five white toenails. But magic is not a toy. Children very rarely treat their toys with respect, and of course respect is what you must have for magic. Otherwise it can turn against you. I don't think that Belinda and Percy knew this. At first they wished for simple things like sweets and ice cream, but they quickly became bored and set their sights on bigger and more expensive acquisitions, 
Belinda got a pony, a pair of skis and a live-in hairdresser, while Percy concentrated more on the death and destruction range of modern toys, a complete set of action men, a solid gold gladiator shield and a fully armed electric Sherman tank. The trouble with Belinda and Percy was that because they had so much already, there was very little that they actually needed. As a result, their wishes became more and more silly. I wish I, I wish I didn't have to take a bath, said Percy one night. Seconds later, the hot water ran out and he went to bed dirty. On another occasion, Belinda said, I, I wish I didn't have to go to school today. And the school burnt down before break. Then one day, the inevitable happened. Belinda and Percy came to make a wish and discovered that they had asked for everything they could possibly think of. Their bedrooms were so full of toys and books and pets that the doors wouldn't shut. They sat glumly, staring at the grey elephant's foot. I wish I knew what to wish for next, said Belinda. They stared some more. Then slowly, an idea formed in her mind. The elephant's foot had obviously heard her wish and was granting it. Oh, that's brilliant, shrieked Belinda, jumping up and taking hold of the umbrella. What is, said Percy. The wish I've just thought of, replied Belinda. Do you remember all that time ago when we first asked for an elephant? What a daft question, tutted Percy. Of course I do. Well, 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 what if we bring the elephant that Daddy had shot back to life? Percy wasn't at all sure. We could thank him, continued Belinda, for the use of his magic foot. No, said Percy. No, I don't think we should. What's dead is best left dead, in my opinion. Oh, come on, baby, goaded Belinda. It'll be fun. It'll be all smelly and dead, said Percy but his common sense held no sway with his sister. She rolled back her eyes, withdrew the umbrella from the elephant's foot, and intoned, I wish that the elephant which my daddy had killed was still alive today and living with us now in this house. There was a terrible roar from the landing, a high pitch trumpeting which told of such suffering that it froze Belinda's blood. They saw the trunk first, sneaking round the banisters, followed by the baby elephant itself, stumbling blindly down the first flight of stairs and crashing to the ground with a cry of innocent rage. It rolled helplessly on its back as it tried to get up, but with only three legs, it had little chance. No! screamed Belinda. I meant you to have four legs! The baby elephant turned its sad eyes towards the two children who, all that time ago, had called so adamantly for its death. Its leg was bleeding. It was crying from the pain. Oh, send him back! shouted Percy. Wish for him to go away! But Belinda could not move a muscle. The baby elephant was still trying to stand. It curled its trunk around the banisters and pulled, but its weight was too great. The rods collapsed and the baby elephant was thrown forward like a huge bowling ball. It rolled helplessly down the stairs across Mrs. Crump Dump's new carpet and straight over Belinda and Percy. When Mr. and Mrs. Crumpdump came home, they found the house in a terrible mess. The stairs were smashed to pieces, the elephant's foot umbrella stand had been stolen, and worst of all, Mrs. Crumpdump's new carpet had bits of squashed children all over it. I'll never get it clean, she said to Mr. Crumpdump. Well, never mind, dear, he said. I can always buy you a new one. Then they went into the sitting room and poured themselves a brandy. 
The baby elephant's ghost was never seen again, and yet the Crump Dump's house remains haunted to this day. Every night, in the hours before dawn, Mr. and Mrs. Crump Dump are woken by the piercing cries of two children. The flattened ghosts of Belinda and Percy float like two playing cards from room to room searching for the baby elephant. They are trying to say sorry, but the baby elephant's ghost is never there, so they weep and wail and pull their hair out. In fact, the ghosts of Belinda and Percy make so much noise that Mr. and Mrs. Crump Dump have stopped sleeping altogether now, and in a week's time, they're getting divorced, which serves them jolly well right in my opinion. <laughs>